you see two multimeters that I've bought in the past, let's say one year ago or two years ago, and um, I found uh, some problems with these meters. They are of course made in China and one problem is that although the electronics are quite good, the whole uh, meter is mounted in a bad enclosure. So the plastic from this meter is in fact very bad and the electronic board to which the display is connected is also uh, not uh, fastened enough to the display. And the point is that um, the display consists of a liquid crystal display is made from glass and the glass is made conductive with uh, some metal oxide or so and here there is a conductive rubber layer and all these connections go here inside from the uh, rubber layer to the glass <coughs> and uh, so the whole uh, construction is quite critical. When the display and the, the rubber bar is not connected properly, not enough pressure, uh, you'll find that the display doesn't function any longer. And that's the problem with these meters. Um, they are cheap, but they are also in fact very unreliable on the longer term, and with the longer term I mean after approximately one and a half year. Um, I uh, try to solve this problem here. As you can see here you can see bolts and screws and inside this meter, I can't show it but a little bit perhaps, I made a bar from non-conductive material, it's Trespa it's uh, a sort of board that's used for uh, outside constructions. It can handle uh, a lot of moisture, trespa. And here there's a bar, and with this bar I press the um, uh, display to the electronic board. Here you see one bolt, one screw, here another view from the from how I repair this. So that's an idea to uh, solve this problem. Make um, a bar from non-conductive material that presses the display to the electronic board. And in fact <coughs> I have to make a bar here also. I didn't do that up until now. But uh, when I torque this meter, you can see here that, that it doesn't function, that it malfunctions. So in fact when you do this uh, repair, you um, make another bar here on the front side from the meter. Inside this meter I've made also a bar to press the display down to the board that so that it makes a good contact. Another problem from uh, this me meter, these types of meters, is that uh, they use a lot of current, especially when they don't have an auto power off. This one has an auto power off, so it switches itself off after, let's say, five minutes or so. That's good. I can advise that to everyone interested in electronics buy a meter with an auto power off, but this one doesn't have an auto power off and that means when after uh, one evening uh, of electronic experiments um, you have set the meter to a certain uh, display value, um, your battery will completely be drained out when you don't switch it off. And another problem is a lot of battery energy is used by these meters 
so I made some small uh, power supplies to supply this meter from the main supply and in my case that's 230 volts at 50 Hertz. This is the best way to make such a circuit. It's a classic uh, bridge rectifier circuit here and the key from the circuit is this resistor that is mounted from the AC output from the transformer to the AC input from the bridge rectifier. And after that um, you will find here the rectified voltage with a positive and a negative. Mount a 470k resistor here and mount a 100 nanofarad capacitor parallel to the supply capacitor. It's always necessary. And choose this value experimentally on the amount of voltage and current that your meter needs. So I experimented with 1k5. I had to bridge it with a 470k resistor in case of a 9 volt uh, multimeter. And this one is a 9 volt multimeter. And uh, so you have to find this out experimentally. This is the best place for a resistor. So do some experiments till you measure here on the uh, terminals to the meter the right um, positive voltage that uh, belongs to the meter uh, according to the datasheet.